were Kitty J. Such a beauty cast away. A silent prayer she paints in peace on her grave. But some broke her sleep. Welcome to this book review. I hope you enjoy. Don't forget to like this video, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. For notifications on new videos that I post. I'm just joking. Okay? But no, seriously. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, please. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let's get to it. So, for every book review, there is a reason why I'm all dolled up and look really scary right now. I'm supposed to look like a bitch. Very nice bitch. Because that's the main thing of this book. Hmm. Hmm. Don't you just love being scary? Hmm. I know I do. So, this book that I'm going to tell you about. But I'm not going to reveal much, especially if I'm mm. No, I will do that because you have to go read it first. The book that I'm going to tell you about Before I Die by S. K. Tremaine. Tremaine? Yeah, I think I know how that's. And it's the number one best seller. It's an amazing book. Now, the previous book I did was, well, it was a prequel. By Tara Hudson. You know I'm like a little romance, but this one isn't really a romance. It is more of like action, thriller, mystery kind of thing going on, and it's amazing. You always on the edge of your seat. You never know what's gonna happen, and there's so many twists. You're like, I think this is gonna happen. Maybe it's something totally different happens and that's crazy so let me get into the characters so the first character is Kath Redway and there's a lot of stuff going on with this chick in this book a lot she has some stuff to figure out memory to regain but I'll let you know about that soon next character is her husband Adam very handsome, but he turns very cold, even angry at her. The events that happen. The next one is their daughter, Laya. Laya Redway. She has Asperger's, autism, very beautiful child, but she always has this dark, mysterious thing going on. Mother's name is Molly. Now this is Kat's mother Molly, and she was into everything. She was very mysterious. She was into witchcraft. She said spells and everything. And Kitty J is a woman in Dartmoor Town. She, someone from the past that was very mysterious. What people called her a witch. She, I think she was burned to death that kind of stuff. The mother Molly loved talking about Kitty J. Especially because she was into witchcraft. Now, why would a crazy woman be onto witchcraft? You never know. But Adam has a twisted past with Molly. But what is that twisted past that we don't know of. Nobody knows, but of course, it was said at the end of the book. The truth is revealed, and that's what you have to find out, which I'm not going to tell you. Because I don't want to tell you the ending. Because I need all that. So, let's get into what the book is about. This book is about the night that Kath Redway tried to commit suicide. Now there's a reason why I'm doing this, but I'm not going to tell you as yet. 
so she committed nearly committed suicide but was found and taken to the hospital. She drove her car into the Burrater Reservoir at the Dartmoor National Park. Nobody knows why she did it, but her husband Adam found a note. It basically was a suicide note saying, I'm sorry, I wasn't, I don't mean to do this. I know you will hate me, just move on, that kind of stuff. And he thought it was her saying goodbye, leaving him and his daughter alone, leaving him to look after his wife. Pretty twisted if you ask me. Why would someone deliberately try and take their life? But the minute Kath woke up in the hospital, she did not know what had happened. She did not know that she drew drove into the burator. She didn't know why she did it. She had memory loss. She could not remember any of it. She thought her life was happy. Her husband was handsome. Her, she loved her daughter. She loved them both. She would never want to leave them. But people were saying differently. That she tried to commit suicide. But she didn't. Did she? What would someone want to do with that? Now, as I said, Naya, the daughter, has Asperger's and autism, which means she does these weird movements when, with each emotion and everything. She doesn't have friends at school at all because they. She's not as the creepy kid at school. She's a loner. Her only friends are. The family dogs, Felix and Randall. She loved them to death and they loved her. They got everywhere with her. They got playing with her. Everything. Even to her special little place where she hides out. Which where she goes when she's having things going on in her mind that she doesn't want to hear. And Adam, what can we say about Adam? We can say that despite everything, he loves his wife. He loves his daughter. He loves his job, which is a ranger for the park. He goes around making sure if all the fencing is okay, the animals are okay, and he's really sick. Things happen. I don't want to say it because it's. But he's naturally generally caring. But he is angry at Cap for trying to commit suicide. Especially with that note, he was really upset that his wife tried to leave him alone and his daughter alone without her mother. Why would she do that? Why? But he's not as innocent as they seem because he has a past with Kat's mother Molly. And Kat's mother Molly hated him. Now, why does she hate him that he is evil? Wicked. Why does she say that about him? Nobody knows. And nobody knows. But Adam does. Where the truth lies with him. Now, another character is Dan and his wife. Now, Dan is Kat's brother. And when their mother died, Molly, she left things for them that was hers. Except, here's the thing. Dan got the house. The beautiful, beautiful house, big house. Got the money. And what did Kath get? She got all the books of her mother's. With all that mystery. The witchcraft and all that kind of stuff. She got, left her mother's artifacts. Dan got most of the stuff and Kath just got these things. Now why? Why did her mother do that? It was because of Adam. Her hate for Adam. And along the way we find out that 
Molly wrote both Dan and Adam letters. They went to India to go and pick them up. But Captain Proceed. Now what was in Dan's letter clearly states don't trust Adam. He is not to be trusted. He is evil. But what did Adam's letter say? Hmm? What did Adam's letter say? He definitely wasn't happy about it. She definitely hated him. But what was he? You'll have to read to find out. Now back to the daughter life. Asperger's autism. Very strange. Along the way, she started to sing this bit of a song, but it wasn't any song. It was a song that Molly used to sing just once or twice. It's an old Dartmoor tune. And Adam was driving Lyre home from school, and she was singing it in the car. And yes, he only, he'd only heard it like a few times. He couldn't quite remember it. But what it says here, he recalled Molly telling him the legend of the blue flamed corpse candles, floating blue lights that appeared at night at a window, pre presaging death. You only sang the song if you thought someone was about to die. His man had sung him, sung the song to him, the song of the blue lights in the dead of the night. Now I'll tell you what the what it was she said but you get the witchcrafting kind of like thing to it very strange isn't it now his daughter has now picked it up from someone where though nobody told him about it but in fact a few years ago when Adam was putting Lyre to bed he sang this lullaby to her to, so she can go to sleep. Why did he sing it to her? And how could he sing it to her when he, he can't really remember it? What did he sing it to her then? Interesting fact. Very interesting fact. <sighs> now, the song is Oh, little blue light in the dead of the night, Oh, pretty, oh, pretty, no near to the creek. Now, this also has a short connection to Kids and Jack. Ghost story, kind of something like that. Witchcraft. And like I said, you only sang that song when someone is about to die. Now who is about to die? And it wasn't the first time Lyre had said it. Lyre said it, said that song another time after Who's about to die? Can't be his wife, because she already tried to kill herself. But now, while all this is happening, Kath is trying to regain her memory of why she did what she did. What's the story? Trying to regain her memory back. And Dan's wife is a therapist kind of thing like that with the mind and everything she's helping her along the way trying to figure it out so use sense to try and unfilter that not filter use sense or go to the places to try and get a memory boost so Kath does that she smells lemon she remembers the night she died, she smelled a lemony smell and that brought back memories. Then she went to walk into each places in town, the Dartmoor, the hotels, asking everybody. And on that process, she asked the receptionist, was her brother really on a business trip. No, there wasn't any reservations at the hotel he said he would go to. And he got to the hospital really, really quickly for someone that was on a business trip away. Suspicious. 
suspicious if you ask me. But Cap finds out that he wasn't on a business trip. It was a lie. The reason why he got to the hospital so quick is because he was at the hotel in town. And he didn't use his name. He used the bartender. The Sorry. There's a bar in that hotel. And there's a girl that works there. Every guy likes her. I'm not gonna say why, but if you catch my drift, you catch my drift. And Dan was there under her name with her in the hotel room because he was having an affair with her. He was sleeping with her. And this is what Kath finds out. So is he the reason for her death? Because she remembers seeing him that night. She starts to remember she was that. so night. happy. Oh, I'm going to meet my brother. How can she go and meet her brother when he's on a business trip? But she saw him that night. She saw him at that hotel with a cap on, with his head down, walking into the hotel. Why was he there? To cheat. So he wasn't the cause when she started thinking her husband did it because he's been following her around but he admits he hasn't been following her around and Lyre keeps telling her there's a man on the moor that keeps on watching every single move that Cap does every single move now who is this man? Lyre says, looks like my father, looks a lot like him, so this makes Cap even more suspicious. But he says, I'm not following you around. How does that fit? But the whole time, it wasn't him. It was another person that looked like him. By the end of the book, Kath is able to piece together what exactly happened and the truth about her mother and her past and the truth about Adam and her past with Mike. His past with Mike. But what is that? What is his past? Now, I'm not going to say any more about the book because I've said just about enough. So, I want you to go and read that book. And tell me what you think. See what the truth is about everything. The ending is epic. It is amazing. I tell you, there are so many twists and turns. It's crazy. So go and read it, please. And please let me know what you think in the comments about the story. Everything. So don't forget to like, subscribe, comment want to know your thoughts and hit the notification bell and subscribe. Also, let me down, know down in the comments what else you want to see me do because I want to be more active on this place, this YouTube place. Okay? So let me know what you want to see me do. I can do anything. Music, makeup, books. Life. So, toodle enjoy your day, have fun, make it worth it, never stop believing in yourself, and follow your dreams. It doesn't matter about anybody around you, if they love you, they will support you. So follow your dreams, love every minute of it, and love yourself. And love your life because life is short. Live each day like it's your last because that's the best life. 